We're at a very important juncture of the panel now, and I wanted to show what the soldering looks like. I know that it looks like I have a lot of sloppiness and sputter on the video. I realize that as I now look at the videos and go back and see them, that it really looks like my solder is not really good. But I'm getting a little close up to show you that actually my lines are pretty good. I really pride myself on my soldering in that I don't leave those little spit holes, those little volcanoes, those little pock marks that some people do. Kind of focusing in on all those little solder balls that I was talking about that I started in an earlier video. There are hundreds of these little solder balls and they go around all this border right here as you can see. There are hundreds. I got a towel on underneath this window because I don't want any solder beads to scratch the bevels. That's the number one culprit problem with bevels is when you're doing a bevel panel. You always want to have some sort of a towel or padding under there. If there's a solder ball, it'll get lost in the terry cloth or whatever you're using for, for padding. If you want to use carpet padding and put a sheet of uh, paper over it, like the paper you get from Spectrum Glass, you know, when you buy large sheets of glass, comes with those uh, cardboard colored sheets. That's really good to use as well. That way when you got jewels and you're soldering upside down that the jewel is going to bury itself into the texture and you're not going to break your window. Anyway, we're at a very important juncture. Again, that was a speaking of. Every window I do requires zinc as the strength of my edging. Every single window. Unless I'm doing a round window and I'm twisting a lead as you'll see in some of my other videos, I always use the zinc. And the zinc is pretty important for strength. But also at this point, if you use zinc in your windows, you're noticing where I globbed up my solder. This is a very important issue because at this point, I'm going to talk to you about these discs that I found are the best by true value. You may have to even buy them from your cousin in another state or find somebody in a big city because I'm going to use these sanding discs along with a drill like this. You see the disc? I'm going to try this with one hand and the camera in the other because I don't have help in doing this. So let's see if I can focus on this. I realize this is loud, but it's the only way I can get the point across. You see, I sand those down so that they're nice and flush. The reason being is because I'm going to frame this window. I used to design, do my own framing. I designed this. This is why you've got to sign those joints down. This is stained glass framing that I designed. It has a track in it. Now, the reason I can't get this framing on is because the solder, like this, is globbed on the other side. I have seen people try to fit that on and break their glass because of the solder. I also know for a fact that when I lived in Colorado that most of the picture framing stores would not frame any windows anymore because they kept breaking the windows because people never solder, sanded down the solder. And I had the distinction of being the only company in Denver where a picture framing store, I forget what they were called, that's many years ago, they would only frame my windows because they knew that I took steps in preparing this so that this track I'll use this track idea down here, right here. You can see it fits in really easy. Well, it's going to fit in very easy once I solder down these globs. And again, the way to do that is with these soldering discs. I'm going to do this again with one hand. I make sure that my corners. I round them. So. What I'm trying to do is round this. Make sure that if you ever have a bore, a bevel like this that's coming right up to the edge, you have to trim this disc down even. You see the back of it? See how a little bit of that disc is stick, the cardboard is sticking out over the edge of the rubber back? You want to make sure that you have full control 
of that sanding dish so that you do not slide and scratch that bevel up. It'd be a shame after this whole window that you would scratch a bevel or the glass by touching it. So you want to make sure that when you grind, I'm not going to do this and make a lot of noise in your ear, when you grind this, you only come into the solder at that point. There's no reason for you to come over see if that close-up shows. I'll use a pen to show you that I only went this far into sanding from here to here. I only went this far which is just barely over a sixteenth of an inch. There's no reason for you to go any farther than just right here just to knock down that edge so you can put your framing on. Framing is very important to a big window that's this size. This window is now 28 or thereabouts by 41. It's very important that you frame a window this big because the framing takes the weight off of the window. The window's got enough problems with gravity of its own without having to be hung by the edge. Whenever you got a window this size, always frame it. It puts the weight on the frame, and the wood can handle it. The glass has got enough issues of just dealing with gravity on its own with all this weight of this glass. So, anyway, I need to cut short on this video. We're going to be going to the next step, and the next step is going to be grinding all this, and then the window's got to be washed, its first wash. See you in the next video.